Folks, at One Rental at a Time, we are a channel that's been doing this for a long time. And because you are, other people come around to make you even better. And we are so lucky to have Sean from Think Media in this amazing book that I've read on my flight to Singapore. Uh, Sean, how you doing? Michael, I'm doing great. Super great to have you back on the channel from traveling and uh, daily financial news, not having to upload on slow Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was very frustrating. 10 hours to load one video. Very frustrating. Wild. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, super grateful and fired up about all the opportunity right now that's happening online and with YouTube. Yeah. One of the things uh, people probably have seen if they've been with my channel for six or nine months is they've seen me change it up. All of that is coaching and mentoring from you. So I appreciate that. But what I want to talk about here is I just want people to realize the power of YouTube. And I want to talk about one video. How one video talking about green juice made you $20,000. Yeah. How the hell can one video about green juice make you $20,000? I don't get it. I'm confused. Yeah, I mean, and I'm excited to break down the whole thing step by step and how really this can apply to just anybody once they understand the ingredients. Um, but uh, there is kind of a got to kind of build it out. So I think the, sure. the first thing is it sounds like a scam. And I assure you, it's not a scam. What what it is, is it's called affiliate marketing. That may be a new term to people. Um, and it's the intersection of affiliate marketing and YouTube and the combination of the two give you some unique opportunities. So YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And a lot of people go to YouTube, 65% trying to solve a problem. And a lot of people go to YouTube specifically re researching a particular pain point. If you're watching this, listening to this, you may or may not have done this, but maybe at one point your dishwasher broke. So you looked up that model, you found that uh, that could be you're trying to solve a pain point. And then maybe I you did. realize that, oh, that Whirlpool dishwasher, actually the uh, motor wears out and you can order one off Amazon. And this is the one I ordered and here's how I installed it. So then if you put a link to that product in the description of the YouTube video, you're adding value to the viewer and someone clicks that link, you get a commission if they make a purchase. Okay. So that's affiliate marketing and, and an example of how you could do that. Another example would be, things like software. So if you were to have a certain CRM, customer relationship management, way you track or follow up leads at your real estate office or something, and maybe some of those things, like there's one that uh, Keller Williams has, it's a hiring software. I don't know if it's an internal, I think proprietary software that they use, but I wanna say it costs thousands a year to, to license. And that's even what they get. We use a thing called Predictive Index, for example. And that costs, I think, us $8,000 a year to do a lot of kind of like personality and analysis, et cetera. Now, I actually haven't looked into this because we, we're over here not speaking as much to people that are hiring, but much more to YouTube. But if you were to get, say, a 10% commission talking about or recommending or teaching on an $8,000 piece of software, that'd be an $800 commission, uh, which is very common in, in software uh, a lot of times they'll give 30, 40, 50% because of the leverage that is there and the lifetime value of the customer. So all that to say is that would be affiliate marketing. And then kind of the formula is just thinking about, okay, what are products I know, love and use myself? Do they have an affiliate program? And what are the terms of that affiliate program? And then also is there white space or any space or opportunity on YouTube to position a video on the other side of a, of a question. And um, I know I'm getting to the green juice video, but one of the times I did this was, I just think about my daily life. And one time mm. I was gifted a Starbucks Verismo machine. Mm. Um, and I realized that if you actually go buy the pods for this machine, it's kind of like a Keurig, that they cost like just as much as a Starbucks coffee. And I was like, this is kind of cool, but like not really that cool. I'd rather <laughs> go to Starbucks and have the experience. And then I was over at just a random friend's house and I was like, oh, we have the same machine. And they go, oh. yeah. And then I was like, can I make a coffee? And I open up their drawer and the pods they were using were just entirely different than the pods I were using. They were just coffee, uh. bean, tea leaf. And I was like, huh. And I was like, where do you get these? They're like, oh, I order them on the website. And I was like, this, there's a lot more variety of coffee. So I'm actually just kind of living my life, but with a mentality of thinking about how YouTube works and how to monetize almost anything you do. Mm. And so I went home and I was like, I'm going to order these for myself. And right. then I uh, looked up on Amazon, 
does Amazon have these? Because I love Amazon's affiliate program. There's many others, but it's the everything store. And they sure enough did. I ordered them. I drank the coffee for a week or so. And then I was also doing some research and I was discovering through keyword research that people were actually wondering, and this was a question people asked the internet and a question people asked YouTube, do CBTL pods work in Starbucks Verismo? So ah. it's identifying this idea, the intersection of all these different pieces. So I shoot a video and I'm like, people been asking, you know, do right. CBTL pods work? And I had the same question because you're looking for an alternative. You're trying to save money. And so let's try it. I try it on camera. I go, we've been testing these for a while. Here's what's cool. There's so many different flavors and varieties. Here's the ones I've tried. Links are in the description down below if you want to check this out. And by the way, you can have an Amazon. You could subscribe so they come once a month. It's so easy. You already have an Amazon account. That's why I love Amazon because if you shop somewhere else, you have to like enter your information. Amazon's like one click checkout. So the conversion's pretty, so pretty huge. So it definitely is a skill set and kind of a combination of those data points but if you make a video like that, I sell coffee to this day every day mm. and wow. I'm making 50 cents here, 80 cents here. And so the green juice one, I was hanging out with my friend Lewis Howes and uh, years ago, and I discovered a, a green juice that he drank called Organifi that you mix with water and it's powder. And uh, because you're traveling, you want to stay healthy, you want some energy. Yeah. So so you could try to just kind of arbitrage, identify something that is one method. But I think the cool, ethical, fun way to do affiliate marketing is to literally share products you know, love and use, have tested, and that you'd recommend to friends and family. You'd recommend mm -hmm. it to your mom. Uh, and you would tell her the pros and the cons and don't buy this one, get this one instead. And and so I was like, this green juice is great, makes me feel good. Uh, and then I discovered, and this would be the leverage point that, okay, there's actually though affiliate programs that have different percentages. And so mm. I found out that, you know, on Amazon, you make only one to 10% and most products you recommend you're going to make like on food, on those CBTL pods, I'm going to make 1%. That's why even on $20 worth of pods, I make 20 cents. At scale, that can compound. And over the years, it comes in as passive income. But what I discovered about this green juice was that the commission was 30%. It was also a little bit higher price because its position is a biohacking kind of, you know, all these good ingredients. So a bottle would be like 70, 80 bucks. And the second lever, so it was not only higher commissions, but it was continuity. So if mm. somebody goes to their website, not Amazon, subscribe, not just buys a bottle, but buys four bottles or subscribes to one a month, I actually earn, if that person sticks with it and is like, this is amazing, drinks it for the next two years, every single month I get paid on that. Oh. And so higher commissions, continuity, compounded by figuring out the positioning of the video. And so what I, in this case, Maybe somebody was looking for, they know the product name, like is Organifi good? But what the question I positioned it behind was best greens juice powder. Right. Now that's pretty niche. Like that's a, that's a very, like people listening to this are like, I would never search that. I don't care. And the question is, yeah, but is there 5,000 people a month that care? Yeah. Is there the answer is yes, people? clearly. <laughs> yeah. Is there, and over the years. So yeah. there's people that care about all these kind of niche things. Like what's the best, very specific question. Uh, if I'm, and, and you can look at things like Peloton versus Nordatrack or something, because people want an alternative to the, maybe a little bit more premium price Peloton. If I get a Nordic track bike or an Amazon Peloton alternative. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't, there's like the product name. There could be, what's the best Amazon version of this. There could be, should I use the get response email marketing software or should I use MailChimp or AWeber? You could do a versus video or three ways versus videos. Mm. And and for many people that are in the kind of creator economy industry that I'm in, sometimes affiliate marketing is a cool way to earn a little bit of extra money. For people right. listening to this as if they build their brand online, it's like, oh, cool, I got a couple extra $100 coming in per month. But you know, as you mentioned, that one video about best green juice powder has single-handedly brought in over $20,000 of profit. And that's over about a five-year period. And yeah, it's that, that's the piece that I that was eye-opening to me. It wasn't the amount, right? Because sometimes you can get a big amount based on the price point in your personal reach. But what I loved about it is this video was five years ago and you were a young man. 
Not, th- yeah. not that you're old now, but I mean, <laughs> you could tell this was a while ago and it's still just clicking, you know, 5,000 you know, views a month or whatever it is. That's, that's the stickiness when you kind of just answer a question again, most of us will never ask that question, but there's a lot of people that will, I, that was the eye opening thing to me. I was like, wow, that was cool. And if you could develop the skill to be able to identify topics that have that potential and I, and then develop the skill of just understanding. And when I say skill, like it it reminds me of, I was shopping for a pressure washer because my wife loves to feed the birds. Unfortunately, they're all pigeons. They're riddled with- (laughs) Enough said. (laughs) (laughs) Riddled with disease. Now, by the way, we ended up having to, because we developed such a brand in the pigeons' minds, even when we stopped feeding them, we became the house where like literally- 10, 50, you know, especially as a real estate, you know, professional, you would understand too, you know, you don't want pitches. So then we ended up having to bite the bullet and, and get uh, the spikes on our roof to try to actually change the branding yeah. of our house and our neighborhood. This is too but, painful. But yeah. That's what's funny. so funny is um, my patio, my little backyard patio thing was now this the infestation pit of yeah. pigeon poop. And so I was like, I, I can't just come out here with a little bit of soap and a, a brush. I need a legit pressure washer. Yeah. So I actually went to YouTube and looked up. I was I was trying to say, okay, I'm looking at like Lowe's and Home Depot, but I'm like, let me look at some reviews about these or whatever. And I found a guy who filmed a video on his phone. It, he probably had, you know, four to eight bush lights before he started filming. And uh, maybe that just was how shaky it field felt. And um. But I was super grateful. The production value wasn't great. The he wasn't like a pro creator, but he had a shop, had a couple of different pressure. He's like, yeah, here's this how this one works, and here's the different details. And that was what I was there for. Right. And so what's interesting is there's like niche things, products, just specific products that that we have in our daily life. And people might think, oh, YouTube's crowded. Or there's well, no, there's just there's so many things in the world, and there's so right. many things that's that are still uncovered. And in some cases, there's a lot of times where the information is so bad, the camera footage is so shaky, or you're like, you didn't even really tell me the pros and the cons or the price point. And so if you just make a halfway decent video that really just serves the viewer, like answers the questions when you're online shopping, trying to make a decision, you're like, I wish I could just watch this. We have people in our community, when you think about online shopping for clothing, that's awful because you can't try it on. So if you have a particular body type, you could build up a brand to be like, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit thicker around the waist and, you know, I'm, I'm six one. And so I love this brand because the sleeves are long enough. And then somebody might keep finding that video for five years. If it's discoverable in search because the way people are typing in questions and people need to know that YouTube videos can rank on Google. YouTube is owned by Google. And so oftentimes videos will show up on the first page. If they're a good answer to a specific question about, Again, clothing, technology, software, uh, tools, and and Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, Nordstrom, Target, Walmart—they all have affiliate programs, and and so yeah, it's a it's a very interesting thing. And what's also interesting is I've heard it said as just kind of a caveat that real estate agents are essentially high ticket affiliate marketers. Because if I recommend a book for 10 bucks uh, and I get 30 cents, if they sell a house for a million and get mm-hmm. they get 30 grand, and if you then tap into YouTube to do so. So if you can start making specific videos in a region, it yeah. only needs 550 views or 37 views. And uh, and if that, and this this was the case for my friend Levi living in Dallas, he uh, he had deals and transactions that happened and he never met the person. Yeah. They watched his videos, they talked on the phone and DocuSign happened all through email and they literally never met because of A, trust was built on YouTube. You got to kind of meet the person and say, oh, cool, this is great. They've been very helpful. Like that's, you're, you're helping people. You're answering questions. They're like, man, they just saved me so much time. They saved me so much research. And so the, it removes friction at that sale point. But what is cool is anyone can start making a little bit of extra money if they maybe find a topic or a category they're passionate about, or they also could start monetizing their hobby. Maybe you're a musician, you've got a bunch of stuff in your garage that's just sitting there. 
you just start turning that into some videos, put those out there. And now you got a couple extra hundred dollars of passive income coming in. And might I add, if you really press the gas on that a lot enough and, and check with your CPA, you potentially could turn your hobby into a business and a tax write-off. So now Absolutely. you're not buying headphones and audio premium audio equipment and just paying it with after-tax dollars. You're like, oh, I have a little niche YouTube review channel where I talk about these different products. And so obviously I have to buy all this stuff that's my hobby. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, that ultimately I've now shifted from hobby into a business, of course, consult with a CPA. That's a very legitimate line of thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think more and more people should really evaluate at their hobby. Like if you've had a hobby for five years and you've, you've have history and you've learned your lesson and there, there's stories there and then affiliate marketing takes it to the next level. And, and I just, the green juice video was eye opening. And, and the reason it was eye opening to me, Sean, is I don't do affiliate marketing. I have a Amazon affiliate link, but only because I have a book. I have two books on Amazon. I'm like, well, might as well have that link. But I haven't done anything else. I've I've not chosen to go that route, uh, which is which is interesting. And Michael, la question, last question for you. Sure. Have have you logged in though and seen if you've sold any random stuff other than your book just because someone oh, absolutely yeah I, it's really I guess the link like lasts for I actually don't even have any idea how it works but I think it lasts for a day or something I, I don't know and that's a big unlock to this whole equation especially on a site like Amazon because if you do recommend something like you yeah, got your own book and then you get your royalties from that or your commission uh off the site but also as using that affiliate link if someone clicks an Amazon affiliate link for 24 hours mm -hmm. anything they purchase you get credit for. When my That's wife and I were in a str struggling financial season and going through a lot of challenges back around 2010, I started to create content on YouTube, do these experiments, do affiliate marketing. And I'll never forget one morning I woke up and I had earned, I we had sold through our link a $1,600 gold coin. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, number one, I've never talked about gold coins. I don't know about collecting <laughs> coins. I don't know I don't anything. Know. Number two, I had no idea Amazon had gold coins, but you know, Jeff Bezos, it is the everything store. Like there's, there's probably it's, if you want it, it's probably on there. Yeah. Number three, I realized while I was sleeping, I earned $168. Wow. So because I had put out a video about something else, and in this case, it was teaching video and cameras and or green juice and these different experiments I was doing on another channel, like that things like that can happen with Amazon links. And so the more clicks, that's why right. as you go to scale, the more people clicking your link, the more content you have out there, sometimes people won't do this like many things because it's not get rich quick. It's not an overnight thing. But if it's it's slow and steady wins. And sure. so if you're like, oh, I'm making two bucks a month. Oh, wow, I'm making 28. Oh, I'm making yeah. a couple hundred. But then imagine you have just videos out there where people are asking whatever kind of questions, clicking your links, and it happens to be November and December around the holiday time. And so within 24 hours, they just click your link on a $10 book, but then they end up transacting a few thousand dollars on Amazon. You get credit for all of that because wow. Amazon for 24 hours says, well, you're the one who sent the lead over here. You're the one who sent the, the person over here. So, you know, that might get the juices flowing for those yeah. listening to this to be like, oh, wow, okay, I can see how that compounds and scales. And that's why affiliate marketing has become a major revenue source, a, a part of the bigger think media empire, our company that literally allows us to employ people yeah. and, and continue to double down and reinvest in our business because it definitely started small with just me making videos in a bedroom, but now right. it's turned into a uh, very significant revenue. Well, you are helping people create small businesses. You call it the creator economy. I love it. I think more people should turn their hobbies into a business. Lots of tax write-offs, learn above the line, below the line. Uh, how can they follow you, be a part of your world and really get all the great things that Think Media has? Yeah, I appreciate it, Michael. And if people want to connect, if you just type in Think Media here on YouTube, you could, you'll, you're you already here on YouTube. You can head right over there and start looking through our library and see what videos pique your interest. It might feel a little bit overwhelming, but just start small. How do you eat an elephant? One yeah. bite at a time. You just start kind of going down the rabbit hole of creating content, affiliate marketing, and we have a, a thousands now of free training videos that will help you learn this skill set. And do yourself a favor, get this book, YouTube Secrets, must read. I've read it twice. And uh, Sean's helping me all the time. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.